is a normal administrative procedure for the Air Force to conduct. Following any such incident that involves any of our platforms, it is a, a tradition for the Chief of the Air Staff to institute a, a, an inquiry into any mishap to be able to uncover the cause of the incident. In this case, it was an accident. Uh, the MI-17 helicopter was on a supply <coughs> mission, oblique, a casualty evacuation. It was in the first phase of deep punch two, and we, I visited the site of the crash. It was on landing that the aircraft entered into a phenomenon called brownout. The area was not, unfortunately, due to the realities on the ground, the helicopter had to land on an unprepared surface just to give succor to our soldiers, to provide immediate help to the injured soldiers that were involved in a suicide attack by the insurgents. Unfortunately, the aircraft, we lost it, and uh, I was there. Most of the parts of the aircraft was recovered. I was given instruction by the chief of the air staff for the aircraft remains to be destroyed because of the very, very terrible terrain that do not permit evacuation of the aircraft from the crash site. Uh, I believe that that is the, question, the, the answer, the much I can give to this team as at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. My name is Patrick Mark. I report for Africa Independent Television. Now, in your briefing, sir, uh, we saw your troops entering Camp Zairo. Your predecessors had, at an earlier similar briefing, told us that Camp Zairo was captured and uh, that they picked some assorted materials, some of which were presented to Mr. President. Now, I'm at, at a loss now that uh, we, are, we seem to be revisiting Camp Zairo again. Could the terrorists have taken the camp after it was overrun before, or, or what is the position, sir? Thank you. All right. Um, well, all right. On that issue, yes, the Camp Zero has been taken by our troops on several occasions. You know, this is an asymmetric warfare. There are no boundaries. We take it today. You leave the place and move to another place, they occupy it again. They continue to run around. But this time around, I've decided that we are going to stick with them in that bush. <laughs> that is just the solution to what you just said. So we are with them in the bush. We are not moving around. We are pushing them around the bush. So we are with them there. Okay. Yes? My name is Maimuna Garba from NTA. Sir, what is happening in Marte General Area? We have not said anything pertaining that place. And secondly, sir, what are the security concerns on some of the major highways like the Bama, eh, Banki, no, Bama, Meduguri, Bama, Goza, because there is no free movement of civilians on that route? All right. On the Marte General Area, we are conducting operation in the Marte General Area. Marte is part of the Tumbus. Um, I'm sure the Air Task Force Commander spoke to you about the Ruan, Ruan Water 4 that's ongoing in that general axis. So we're operating on that general axis right now. Uh, the details of the operation is not out. I would have given you that. But immediately it comes out, we'll give you that. But all you know that we are making very serious progress on that axis. On the issue of the roads, for some safety reasons, because of the operations we are conducting, we ensure that some of the roads are blocked for civilian use for now. Um, because we also know that some people are sabotaging the effort of the military in this conduct of the operation, so I've decided to seal up some of the roads until the operation is conclusive. And then we immediately we'll conclude the operations, then the road will be open to people who don't have to escort you again. 
you can now go on your own. For instance, you can move from Meduguri to Damasak through Gubio, Karito up to Damasak without anybody escorting you. You can move from here to Konduga, nobody's escorting you. You can move from here to Jikwa if you want nobody escorting you, you can. You can move from here to some part of the, uh, the Northeast if you want to without any escort. But there are certain critical areas that have influence on the operation that we are doing that will allow people to go through those, those routes for their own safety until we are through with those uh, operations. Once we are through, we'll open up those roads so that our people can have their normal commercial activities. My name is Blessing Tuno. I report for Channels Television. Uh, I would like to start with um, the $1 billion funds that, that the presidency is setting aside for you know, security issues in the country. Uh, this was, um, uh, did not sit down well with a lot of Nigerians. And we know a large chunk of it uh, is supposed to come to the theater uh, of operations here in the Northeast. And people believe that since we said um, Boko Haram uh, has already been defeated, w uh, what is the justification that part of the allocation is coming here? That's one of my questions. Secondly, I would like to know, you know, at some point we were told that the supply route of the Boko Haram has been blocked. Why is it that, uh, you know, they still have a lot of uh, arms and ammunition in their position? Why are they not running out of supply? Thirdly, I would like to know, what, uh, how do you treat a Boko Haram fighter that surrendered and then the one that was arrested? Uh, what uh, is the difference between these two? Thank you. Okay, let me start, let me see it from the last question. Surrendered Boko Haram or any rescued Boko Haram, they are given the normal professional treatment. We give them their normal human rights treatment. We get you, we profile you, we give you medical attention, we document you, they will hand you to the necessary authority for further investigation, if there is need for that, otherwise we take you to the IDP camp, depending on where you fall into. But for those of them that have surrendered, you saw the pictures and the clips of those that have surrendered, how they have been treated women. What we are saying and what we want the media to do is to try to reach out. There are quite a large number of them who want to surrender. We are in contact with some of them, but they are scared. So the media has a role to do by convincing them to come out. Nobody is going to kill anybody. We are not interested in killing them. They are Nigerians. So the media has a role to play by convincing those are people who are in the bush to drop their arms and come out. You have seen that their leader is on the run. So what are they fighting for? So we expect the media to carry out this message and carry, carry it too far for us. That's exactly what we want. Let it be repeated message. Please don't, they should come out. Nobody wants to kill them. The suffering there is too much. On the second question on um, ammunition supply. Well, like you said, you could see the large number of what we were able to recover from the bush, from them. It means over time, they've been equipping themselves, either cutting away from the military, from the police and other security agencies, or getting it from different sources. But what we've done now is to block all their supply routes, and you can see that they are running out of everything. We are picking the balance of what they have in the bush. So I will assure you that um, those logistics won't get to them again. On the issue of the $1 million, well, I don't have much to say on that. That is a government policy. But what I'm going to say is that, for instance, the, the Super Tucano uh, uh, aircraft that the federal government is trying to buy from the military from the American, one of those aircraft cost about $40 million. An Apache helicopter, for instance, costs almost between 20 to $65 million. You can cross-check these things, they're all in the net. So talking about a million dollars to the military in the Northeast, is, to me, is grossly inadequate. Okay, if we want to buy maybe a latest tank, you talk about between five to $6 million. These are all in the net, you can assess them, and then you can on your own decide if that amount is reasonable or not. That's all I can say, but that is not what we should be talking about in the North. It's all we know that the federal government will give us our fighting materials and we deliver based on our constitutional rules. Um, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Sadiq Avoka. I represent uh, Blue Britain newspaper, sir. Uh, first and foremost, I will say congratulations and well done, sir. Uh, since we came, you are in office. The public has, has seen and hearing, sir. Uh, however, sir, with the achievements on ground, so far as we have an office, may we know when uh, residents or people living around Bama, Banki, Goza, 
can fly them.